Hey people, we're just here to look at the X1 Nano. So this is the 2021, so first video of the year. Standard Lenovo packaging. So audio-wise, just to say, we've, we're trying the Rode wireless mic. So hopefully a little bit better than before, but our office is quite noisy. You can see stickers still sealed here. Oof. This is the i7 version, 5.2 and um, 16 gig of RAM. That's nice. See, empty box. Okay, so charger, 65 watts, new charger. It's actually really compact compared to what you usually get. It's noticeably smaller. Ah, so in theory, some of the vendors actually send these laptops out in box directly. Uh, without any of Miller bag, etc. So most of the actual cushioning effect is down to this foam. So you know, it's uh, fingers crossed that you get it safely. So instinctively XPS style box, um, it's unsealed. Looks feels quite luxurious, and it's completely sealed. So you actually need to unseal it. So. Zoom in a little bit. Really airtight. So it reminds you of the Apple box where there's actually resistance from being able to open the box. So here we go. Light frisbee. This is an untouched version. So this is about 900 grams. How does this work? Never 100% sure. I like these sort of packaging. A little bit awkward cut. I'm just kidding. So, that comes off. Carbon documentation. So, for the 4G model, you really need to have um, configured it with that. So, you can't upgrade later because the antenna wouldn't necessarily be in there. For anybody who's bought a XPS before, this would really remind you of that. Yeah, no, it's. If it's unfinished, maybe it's not quite up there with the Apple box. It's a ThinkPad, you didn't buy a box. You can see this sticker, this is a little bit of a new design language, subtly different. So it used to be the X1, I think it used to be on the corner, but now X1 and ThinkPad are in one place. Inside, you notice the chassis is actually really slim. It bends all the way backwards, and when it's backwards, um, you can actually see the chassis at the back is lifting the base up a little bit. Um, we didn't see the touch option at the moment, as far as the UK goes. Let's see. I probably shouldn't really hold it like that, but um, please don't hold it like that. So hold it by this way is probably more appropriate, but this just shows you how sturdy the frame is. Um, and um, can you actually open with one hand? Let's just quickly have a play. Yeah. No, not really. So need two hands really. The privacy shutter on the inside, you can see X1 Nano, um, the keypad. So interesting. There is a distinctive feel of responsiveness. If you're coming from Carbon um, Carbon Six or even Seven, it has got down from 1.8 to 1.5. Now it's 1.35. Some of the keys give you a really quite crispy feel. For instance, the enter button, the space button on this one feels quite hollow to me at least so the keys have a slightly different feel on the top it doesn't feel as crispy as the inter button almost a little bit spongy so the key travel almost feels a little bit different key to key literally just unboxed so i don't really know so on the inside is similar thinkpad finish and um, there's going to be four speakers it's going to be similar setup to the carbon so quad speakers two at the top two at the bottom and that's going to be quite decent Obviously, it's a smaller chassis, so have a managed expectation. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, the ports. Um, yeah, so there's a audio jack and um, two of the USB, uh, USB 4 ports. So it's um, nothing on the other side. And you'll notice a power button has been moved onto the right hand side from the inside of the laptop. So um, personally, I prefer it inside, but um, the heat exhaust on the right hand side, as usual. So if you're a right-handed person, it's um, you'll see feel some exhaust on the right-hand side. Some of the laptop have actually moved the heat vent to here, but this is not one of those. Um, does this feel like two thousand pound laptop? Mm, not 
sure. It feels really, it feels really robust, and I think you feel the quality, and you know it's been well designed. Um, but just say, don't hold it like this when you have it. But wow, it's really sturdy, and um, I think the question you probably ask is, does it flex the keyboard? Okay. If you do press it into the center of it, if you zoom in a little bit, um, you will definitely see that if you press into it, it flexes a little bit in the middle. It's not massive. I mean, part of this is probably because the whole keyboard frame will still be soft, and the keyboard top is not me metallic, for instance, like MacBook Pro or the M1. So you'll definitely have some flex if you press very heavily into it. But I think most of the time you'll just notice a keyboard if you're coming from a ThinkPad. It's different. It's different to if you use carbon. And you actually also notice these half width key. So it's um, smaller than what you're used, used to seeing with carbon. And also the top row is a little bit compressed and the individual keys are a little bit smaller. But to have a really ultra thin and light body, you probably have to cut some corner somewhere. So as you usual, the first time you switch on the ThinkPad, you need to plug in a power. It's just to stop it from switching on accidentally in transit. Okay, here we go. So processor-wise, I think this model can use as much as um, maybe just under 40 watts. So even though it's really thin and even though it's using the lower power version of the chip, um, the 10 nanometer chip, it can still use quite a lot of power. For Intel, they seem to enjoy being able to give you the burst performance. Oh wow, I think first time switching it on, it's it's one of those really see it in person thing. It's 16 by 10, it's just really nice. The reason why I've said XPS a few times up to now is I think this laptop looking at it, it really reminds me of the XPS 13. It's almost like you combine XPS 13 with the carbon, if that makes sense. Except this is more businessy. You notice a few of the, this is what they had on the carbon seven, a few holes for the mic on the front edge, whether it's for noise active noise cancellation or something else. One thing just to pick up while I was setting up, I really noticed this button, it just feels really different to what I'm used to with carbon. It used to be that with carbon, I say fifth or sixth gen, you can press into it, whereas now it's feels it's a lot more spongy. And whereas for the trackpad itself, it gives you quite interesting sound. It feels it feels as if something's stuck. That sort of noise rather than um rather than the intentional click i mean when you click on that the click noise feels really intentional for this one it sounds like almost as if somebody leaked some liquid into there i know they haven't but um, that's what it feels sounds like sticky really strange so if you're only going to be using the nano then it's going to work for you i think it's going to be fine but if you have to switch between this and other ThinkPads quite consistently, then you will notice the difference very quickly. And if you frequently switch between this and the desktop, for instance, or USB external keyboard, then the difference will really be there. Hopefully for the next generation, they can make it a little bit better. We hope to do a little bit more in-depth review of this if we can, if we have time, that'd be useful. But I think so far what I've also seen is some Last year, for the Intel, some of the Intel-based machines, it's um, really quite noisy. But I think I've not connected to the internet, so it's not fetching the updates. But um, so far, it's been quite silent, so that's reasonably decent. And the base hasn't been that hot. But I think for the detailed temperature stuff, I think we probably need to get a more detailed review. So the hinge, it um, when you leave it in position, it just stays there. You can't. There's no flex very little flex. I mean, over time, whether it, yeah, whether it um, flexes more, we don't really know, probably. Um, nope, not, not a touch screen. The touch screen version is going to be about 100 grams more heavy than the base version. So that's going to change your interaction a little bit. I mean, it'd be interesting to see if more people actually go for the X1 Yoga, um, the Titanium Yoga, rather than this one, I think. It's it's like for me this feels like what uh, XPS thirteen from Dell would be like, and I'm sure many people would absolutely love it. So let's have a quick chat about the spec. If you are still watching, um, 
i7, so it's quite um, it's quite a powerful processor with um, a high turbo boost, but quite low base. So there is an 8 gig version, and we're on the 16 gig. Not definitely not upgradable. So get the one that is um, good enough. So I think it might be that the i5 plus 16 gig would be a really popular option. The SSD, it's M2 still, you can change it, but it's M2, um, 2242, so it's a smaller M2, so it's Lenovo and their standard formats. Um, I think the biggest change coming onto this model is going to be the Intel XC graphics. It's much faster than before, not going to help you to do game, but it's, um, it's going to be um, more efficient, I think, if you're watching 4K videos quite frequently in quite a few different tabs um, that and um, generally it's just good to get a boost. I think 4-core is actually single core performance wise it's actually quite strong on this generation especially compared to some of the AMD. We haven't really seen the AMD machines with the 5000 um, being benchmarked as yet. Where it might not be as impressive would be the multi-threaded stuff but to be honest I think the idea is probably you need a bigger laptop to do this. This one is just a really good everyday machine. So I mean, who is this for? If you ask me, then this product couldn't have arrived at a more inconvenient time. It's a pandemic lockdown, pretty much most of the places. Um, and you've got an ultra portable laptop, which really excels when you travel a lot. So you're paying a lot of money for a laptop that probably you can't use um, take with you as you, you know, move around. But, you know, some people still go to the office. So, but it still leaves a mark, as you can see. Definitely less fingerprint foam. Another thing is the price. <laughs> I mean, it, it's almost twice as expensive as a base M1 MacBook Air um, in some countries, but we've got the top in specification. So it needs to do a lot, right? And some people, you know, genuinely just prefers the ThinkPad environment and for them Mac is not really an option. That's fine, I understand that. This this one, for instance, costs us just over 2,000 pounds. So it's definitely not cheap. It's ultra premium. It's like what the X300 in the old days used to be. You pay, really pay for the ultra portability. Except back then you used to get more ports, more upgradability. And um, whereas now it's miniaturization again. You have the Wi-Fi 6, which is good, and um, but yeah, generally, having a higher plate, it's, it doesn't feel heavy as an XPS. Personally, I would definitely consider the X1 Carbon 9 if you want a slightly bigger keyboard. What I would probably say is actually carbon pricing is um, actually probably a little bit better than this. So for this one, you do pay for the premium aspect. I think looking at some of the reviews online, the webcam is actually not a massive improvement over last year. So just in case you were thinking of um, a setup, then you'll probably have to wait or use an external DSR or something. Anyway, um, we hope to find some time to look into this, um, maybe a full review, I'm not quite sure. But um, let us know about um, the audio. Is it any better? Still meh? Or, you know, we'll hope to, um, we hope to edit a little bit better going forward. Uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, for watching this unbox. Thanks.